I think we are live. Um, I hope you can see and hear me very well. Welcome, everyone. Um, okay, so welcome to the 42nd Pan-European Conference on Digital Education. Uh, I can see uh, comments that are saying hi and hello um, from Greece, from Romania, also from Serbia, from Slovenia as well. So I am saying hi from Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia, to the comfort of your own homes, wherever you have tuned in. Uh, we are, of course, very happy that you are uh, here with us again. And since we have five presentations today, uh, I won't take too much time with this introduction, but I will invite our presenters to just shortly present themselves uh, before going to the actual presentations. So, um, in order of today's presentations, uh, I will first call Diana. Uh, hello, Diana. Welcome. Hello, everybody. I am Diana Jelavic, an English teacher mentor at High School Jureka Stelan in Omish, Croatia. I've been teaching English for more than, three, more than three decades, mostly in vocational programs. Okay, thank you very much, Diana. Uh, then we have Palma. Hello, Palma. Hello. Hello everybody, I'm Palma Bertani and I'm a project manager for Erasmus Plus project in Italy for Il Mio Lavoro, uh, which is based in Abruzzo in the middle center of Italy. Okay, thank you very much and welcome to the conference. So the third presentation uh, we have with us Gabriela. Hello Gabriela. Good afternoon everybody, my name is Gabriela Tudor. I'm a physics teacher. I've been, uh, physic I've been teaching physics for 35 years in Kalistrat Pogash National College from Tekuch. It's a town not far from the Blue Danube. And um, I'm delighted and honored to participate uh, at this exceptional event. Thank you so much for your invitation. Um, well, yes. uh, my uh, students are uh, especially focused on uh, real sciences, and uh, I refer to it in my uh, presentation. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have the fourth presenter with us also, Sabina. Hello, Sabina. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to uh, join again uh, um, these conferences. My name is uh, my full name is Sabina Majaru. I'm a teacher of English. I have been teaching English for more than 15 years um, in um, Bucharest High School, uh, upper secondary uh, school. Um, that would be it for now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And last but not least, we have another presentation. Hello, Karin. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Karen Helmerson, and I'm going to present a project about growth mindset. I am the international coordinator of the Frida Skolona School Consortium in Sweden, and I'm delighted to be here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, we will go to the presentations very shortly, but before that, I would just like to say uh, a few practical arrangements, as always. So, um, 
All the today presentations are already available in our Facebook group, uh, Pan-European Conference on Digital Education. You are more than welcome to join the group and to download the presentations that you will be hearing today. Um, and of course, the link for the certificate will be posted uh, on in the comments on YouTube and uh, our Facebook page. Um, so you can apply for the certificate in uh, the next 24 hours. Uh, at the end of the conference, we will also put a link for the evaluation of the conference. And we appreciate uh, everyone who takes a minute or two to evaluate the conference so that we can improve uh, and get better and that we can get your feedback. Um, because... Mm, your feedback and the fact that you are here with us is what makes this conference, of course, very special. So we will be also very happy uh, if you, during the presentation, put uh, some comments um, in the comments. And, uh, of course, if you post some questions for the presenters uh, so that after their presentations, uh, we can ask them uh, or share with them your thoughts on the uh, actual presentation. Um, so hello everyone once again. Uh, hello to Serbia, to Italy, to Romania, and of course to any other country that is with us. I am reading your comments and uh, I will be with you in the comments as well. So um, I would suggest now that we go to our first presentations. So I will call Diana in the studio. Hello. Hi, Diana. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. Can you see my first slide? Uh, just a second. Okay. Yes, we can see it. So if you are ready, you can start. Yes, we can start. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Diana. You can uh, start your presentation if you are ready. We see your slides and we see also you. Oh, you cannot see. We can see you and uh, your presentation. So whenever you are ready, you can start. I have started, but you cannot see. I can see. I can see. Okay. Okay. Great. We see it now. Let's unlock the potential together. Maybe, you know, we didn't, uh, or at least we didn't see the start. And I'm an EFL teacher at Jureka Stelan High School in Omish, Croatia, with over three decades of teaching experience, primarily in vocational programs. Today, I will be discussing a topic that addresses the needs of my students, some of whom are following individualized or adapted education programs due to various conditions. Join me in exploring how AI tools can improve communication, learning, and social skills of neurodivergent students in EFL classrooms. Let's unlock their potential together. Okay, that's it. And now I can continue. Well, here comes a very important message uh, that we all feel concerned about. And it says, AI will not replace teachers, but teachers who use AI will replace those who don't. AI has become uh, too significant to ignore. Therefore, we must now focus on harnessing its potential in productive and beneficial ways, especially when it comes to supporting neurodivergent students, as you will hear about today. The desired outcomes are deeper understanding of the challenges faced by neurodivergent students in EFL classes and increased awareness of the benefits and applications of AI technology in supporting neurodivergent students. That 
I will hope will be achieved by the end of this presentation. Now let's gain a better understanding of neurodiversity by exploring some facts together. Neurodivergent is a non-medical term that describes people whose brains develop or work differently. It's been coined to promote acceptance and avoid labeling. It refers to conditions like attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyspraxia, Toure, autism, and others. The main challenges encompass learning difficulties, social communication, and sensory processing. Proper diagnosis is essential to providing effective and timely support that works. Inclusive learning practices offer opportunity to thrive and succeed. Neurodiversity can be an asset because of unique perspectives, creativity, and problem-solving skills. Neurodivergent students may excel in areas like pattern recognition, attention to detail, or unique ways of thinking. What about your students? Are there neurodivergent students in your classes? Here are some indicators that can prompt you to adopt inclusive teaching strategies even if there are no officially documented accommodations. My students have difficulty with staying focused on tasks for extended periods of time. They process and retain information differently and very often feel frustrated about it. They are highly sensitive to sensory input and they feel discomfort about it. Their school performance is uneven, they're hard to reach, they easily get overwhelmed and give up. They have difficulty with organization and time management. They struggle to communicate verbally. They may have difficulty with social cues and relationships. Sometimes they may have special interests or obsessions, or they may experience panic attack, anxiety or depression. To support language acquisition in such cases, you can always reach out for AI multifaceted support. Here are various categories of tools and their potential applications. This list is not exhaustive as it continues to grow and become more complex on a daily basis. Artificial intelligence can effectively address a wide range range of challenges, conditions, and disabilities. Okay, at this point, I would like to share my toolkit with you. I will introduce just seven tools of my choice that can greatly assist in creating tailored experiences for students who learn differently. One such tool is Goblin. The that breaks down tasks into manageable pieces or steps, what prevents our neurodivergent students from getting overwhelmed after being assigned the task. By overcoming the initial frustration, they get opportunity to accomplish the task, feel successful and stay motivated for further learning. Emotional support is a really valuable aspect of this tool and I highly recommend Goblin. Let's keep on track. Another accessibility tool worth noting is Immersive Reader, developed by Microsoft, particularly helpful for dyslexics who struggle with reading. Okay. It reads the text it reads the text aloud a name okay it reads the text aloud uh, enabling students listen to the content you can customize font size style and spacing to make the text more readable and visually comfortable. It also breaks down words into syllables, provides an image, 
corresponding definition and translation. For example, you can you can check pronunciation again. Very Here enough. you get you get a translation in Italian in, into the Hello. chosen language. Diana. I'm yes. so sorry to bother you, but we only see the first slide. You know, the the yes, I believe you are sharing also others, but we only see the, the video, the first video that you started with. Oh, my God. Can you, uh, is this from the same presentation or? Yes, it is from the same presentation. Can you try to, um, uh, just a second, I will try to put it again. Can you, um, I think you need to exit the, the video and uh, then go to the slides or otherwise try to share it once again, because for now we only see the first one and I believe it would be helpful if the participants saw also the other ones. Okay, I will okay, try yeah. again. Okay, great. Share screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a second. Okay, uh, now we can see it. Can you just try to move it back and forward so that we see if it's... Okay, I think now it will work. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so sorry. And you can continue. Thank you. Okay. I have talked about uh, Goblin Tools and Immersive Reader by Microsoft. And now I'm going to Magic School. The third uh, tool I would like to show you. Can you see Magic, tool, uh, magic School inside? Uh, can you can you see the magic school inside? No. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Can you hear me? Now, yes. Can okay. I continue? Yes, yes, of course. Okay, Magic School is a versatile tool that saves teachers time, enabling them to focus on addressing the unique needs of the, their students. This tool offers three highly beneficial applications, the text rewriter, text-dependent questions generator, and vocabulary list generator based on text. These features can be used to create level text questions and vocabulary lists within seconds. This can be helpful for the differentiated instruction as teachers can create tailored versions of the same materials to cater to diverse groups of students. By leveraging these features, teachers can ensure that all students in their class can access the content and learn at their own pace. This inclusive approach guarantees that no student is left behind, fostering an environment where every learner can thrive. The next tool is the FIT. It makes the entire internet accessible to your learners. It helps to convert authentic pieces, in this case, an article into teaching material. By simply pasting a link, you get adapted versions suitable for various proficiency levels with vocabulary explanations, illustrative sentences, and comprehensive questions for assessments. This magic is possible with just a link or any document you find useful for your learners and your lessons. No student is left behind with defeat. And the next one is Kiwi. Kiwi is uh, integrating multimedia like video 
and it can provide a more engaging and effective way to cater to students' diverse needs and styles of learning. Having watched the video, students can immediately start interacting with artificial intelligence by putting questions about the video. Then they can get a video summary and a quiz to check listening comprehension. Meanwhile, they can get real-time feedback and explanations chatting with AI. The next one is voice to text, often referred to as uh, speech recognition or dictation. It is a technology feature in Microsoft Word that allows users to convert spoken words into written text. And it is really helpful for these graphics. Last but not least is class X. Learning language with music can be very relaxing, which is an important factor for neurodivergent students. Music can help them to regulate emotions, reduce stress and improve focus, all of which can be beneficial for learning. Additionally, music can provide a common language and sense of community, which can help them to feel more connected and supported. Students can choose the favorite song, watch the music video, fill in the blanks in the lyrics as they listen and get immediate feedback on accuracy. Next step is singing along with a piano cover. What is a fun way to improve pronunciation? Then they can also record themselves and listen to the recording when they have finished. Finally, students have to answer the question about meaning of the song, giving their own interpretation. Okay. Artificial intelligence can turn even the most challenging task into a piece of cake. First and foremost, our students need clear guidelines that will ensure their responsible behavior and the proper use of artificial intelligence. Then we need to question how we teach writing in high school and reconsider what we are grading in order to design tasks more resistant to artificial intelligence. AI literacy is a critical skill and moral imperative for every responsible educator. And therefore, it is crucial to promote AI education and training initiatives. To summarize this uh, presentation, here is a quote that says, the true potential of AI in education lies in its ability to unlock human potential, making learning more accessible, adaptive and inclusive. And a bit of reflection at the very end. As we face an unpredictable future, unconventional brain wiring may become a necessity for adapting to unforeseen complexities and emerging challenges. So consider using AI tools to support the growth of neurodivergent minds because you might unlock potential of a new Pablo, Bill or Leonardo in your class. Thank you very much for your time and attention and goodbye everybody. Thank you very much, Diana. Okay, so uh, thank you. Um, yes, uh, thank you very much for the presentations. For the moment, we don't have any questions. I hope I didn't miss some questions. If I did, I ask the, everyone who is listening to us to post it once again. So maybe I will, uh, uh, if there will be any question, also we will have some time at the end. Uh, but for now, thank you very much. And we, we will go to the next presentation. presentation. Hello, Palma. Hello, Palma. Hello. Um, I will share my screen. Yes, please. Okay. 
just one mm. second because yes, of course, it doesn't find it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, this hey, one, sorry, it's just a bit before okay. it was working right now. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just uh, wanted uh, to um, tell everyone that the um, title of your presentation is Game Learn, Game Based Learning Experience in an Erasmus Plus project. Uh, while we are waiting uh, that you find the presentation. So for everyone who is well, listening, really open. have you opened it? Uh, because yeah, uh, for, it, it, uh... are you sharing the screen or the slides? Because for the moment I cannot see it. Mm -hmm. Just I will try it like that in another yes. way probably it would uh, okay so I also wanted to tell to everyone uh, who is listening that if you have any questions at any point you can put them in the comments and at the end or uh, of every presentation or even after uh, every presentation if you think of something we will ask the presenters Okay, um, yes, Palma, did you find the presentation uh, or it says it that in elaboration? I uh -huh, so it's uh, processing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, okay, I see it now. I see it now. Okay. So if you Perfect. are ready, you can start. Of course, thank you. So as already Tina said, I'm here to present the results of the Game Learn project that was implemented uh, in the last two years. It was um, funded by the European uh, Commission, uh, specifically in, Ita in Italy. Uh, it's the reason why we were the coordinator of the project. We worked we, in a quite big partnership, including two uh, organizations from Italy, two from Germany, uh, two from Slovenia, one from Slovenia, one from Spain, one from Romania, and one from Sweden. So what were the problems that the project faced? Actually, we were um, interrogating ourselves about how much teacher were able to implement and designing effectively um, game-based learning, uh, game-based teaching pathway. So, um, and we discovered through a survey that actually few of them were able to master in an effective way the methodology, even, um, even though it is uh, widely demonstrated that it's highly effective for the students' motivation and engagement in the learning process. So what were the pro objectives of the project? Actually, it was to increase and the motivation and the participation of students in their learning process, uh, applying um, some practices based on game-based learning and also integrating game-based digital education. Um, the main purpose was to, to respond to these objectives, actually. We, were, we wanted to improve the effectiveness of the learning path, raise the quality of this learning path, and also maximize the potential of the game-based learning in the European schools. How we try to um, get these results and to reach these objectives? Actually, we created three project outcomes. The first was the MOOC, Game-Based Learning for Teachers. It, was, uh, it is a MOOC available online on Udemy for free uh, for teachers and educators as well, in which, they can, um, in which they can attend in their own language or at least in the language of the partnership. So Romanian, Germany, uh, German, Italian, um, Spanish and uh, Swedish and Slovenian as well. Uh, the, this uh, course about what game-based 
based learning is and what gamification is. The, uh, the course is structured in uh, 10 lessons uh, made by um, some game-based learning experts and uh, it is um, built in order to let the teachers acquire the main principles about game-based learning and gamification and start to implement them in their classes. This MOOC contains video, text, exercises and quizzes as well, and it's possible to get a certification for, from it. This is a short overview of uh, how the, the MOOC looks like. And you can, as you can see, there are few texts in which we present uh, the topic of that specific section. And there are also some quizzes to, uh, for, to assess the, the learning and the um, information acquired. The second, um, this is the way how to subscribe, of course, the MOOC. It's available, as I to already told, in, uh, in different languages. We have also the Euskadi, because our uh, Spanish partner was from um, Basque country. So we decided also to implement uh, the MOOC in their uh, language. Uh, it's free, as I already told, and to access it, it's just mm, it's just needed to click on the link that we put in the, the presentation and subscribe the platform. The second, uh, the second output was um, the digital toolkit. What uh, it was aimed at, uh, substantially, we noticed that, that teacher uh, struggle on finding the right tools uh, to, to implement games in their classes. So, uh, and um, once they uh, Google on about that, they were, um, they found uh, plenty of results and were not so, uh, familiar in choosing the best one for the uh, learning outcomes, according to the learning outcomes they wanted to, do, to reach with their students. So we decided to describe in this digital coot, uh, toolkit uh, 36 digital game-based tools, uh, and um, they are described actually with um, with a presentation card in which they you can the, the user can read the main functions if it is available in different language if it can it allows the co-working mode and there is another slide that explains the functionality and there um, and we give also some suggestions to implement them uh, where you can download it uh, actually on the project website, which is www.gamelearnproject.eu uh, on in the section IOS. It's available to be consulted online and also to be downloaded as a PDF. The last, uh, the, um, actually during the project, we decided also to test our um, project outcomes and uh, how we did it. Actually, in the partnership, we had schools. So after a training during uh, LTTA uh, that was taken in uh, Germany, in Germany, yes, um, uh, we trained the teachers, which uh, who come once come came back in their schools, they starting implementing the game based learning according what they were trained about during the LTTA and what they learned from the MOOC. And I can say uh, very proudly that we get. Um, really excellent results. These are just a few pictures of some of the things that the students implemented. And as you can say, as you can see, they built a laboratory, uh, a chemistry lab to understand better the um, 
the safe rules that they have to follow during the experimentation. And the, the second one is a picture of a sort of dramatization of a very famous uh, Dante's opera, the Divina Commedia. And we uh, get uh, many other results because the students were able to build their, their own games, such as uh, uh, guess who based on historical uh, people, um, characters, or or um, some quizzes uh, with Kahoot or uh, quizzes about geography and many others. Then uh, what we decide to, to create um, after the experimentation, after the piloting test, we collected all the results that uh, the teachers get during the, the piloting test. And we created the last output of our uh, project, the game-based learning curriculum, which uh, contains actually different and really useful tools for teachers. Uh, first of all, there are some lessons compendium in which you can get uh, from which you can get inspired the map of the learning outcomes and some tools to plan and implement the game based teaching path. Um, probably the most important tools are the ones for the planning and implementing, and this is a short overview of the ones contained in the in the output. There is a, the long-term game-based plan tool. It's a sort of chart where the teacher can define the topics, the learning outcomes of that specific topic, the activities uh, to be implemented to reach the learning outcomes and the games that can be realized. Then there are the learning outcomes association tool because we uh, understand that we noticed that usually teacher use games just for the assessment, but we wanted to break the, to break the prejudice that uh, it's like that and to let them experiment and test how to use game also in other phase of the learning process. Then there is the lessons plan tool in which the teacher can go in depth uh, with this uh, planning of the teaching path and just planning the lessons time per time and the control flowchart to get and to understand if the, um, if the process is going well or there's something that's, that must be changed. Um, this is uh, an example of the lesson compendium. It's, uh, ma it, it was a lesson, math lesson in which the teacher used an escape room. And here we, um, we explain how did they implement actually the game. They just put in this ex escape room short math exercise to let the students train their ability in solving them. This, uh, this is another about English, um, and they use a game like Pictionary to test their voc vocabulary and lexicon. Mm, this is the last example, and probably it's the most complex one made by a um, French teacher in Italy, and they decided to implement this game through different months and he played uh, role play games with his students based on Dungeons and Dragons, but using the French theater and the French authors. So where you can actually download also this, um, this uh, output, it's already our project website, and it's al also for the, the game-based learning uh, curriculum. Uh, it's available online, just to consult it online because it's an interactive um, output or download the PDF. And thank you for the attention. And if you want to know more, you can just ask us something about. Thank you very much, Palma. Uh, so I don't know if you've seen, uh, but I've put some comments already during your presentations because they were saying that it's very interesting. And of course, they were most 
uh, very interested where they can download it, but you have already answered that. So all the presentations are also in our Facebook group. So if you download the presentations, Palma has put a link as she has uh, just showed you. And uh, yes, congratulations once again. Um, there are comments. Thank you. Saying, thank you very much. So uh, thank you for now. Uh, we will now go uh, to our third presentation and we have Gabriela Tudor. Hello, Gabriela. Hello again. Hi. I'd like to share my presentation. Just yes, please. Okay. Is it okay? Well, uh, just a second. Do you yes. see yes. In large screen? Yes, we can see everything blended learning of physics in the digital technology era. So yeah. if you are ready, the stage okay. is yours. I'm going to present you a few aspects about blended learning of physics in the digital technology era. The topic being so vast, I will point out a few theoretical aspects and uh, I will focus especially on the applications in which I valued the students' digital skills. <clears throat> we face a wide range of visible challenges in the 21st century and because they all intersect, we cannot focus on just one in particular. New perspectives perspectives in scientific research and teaching are usually created at the same time. Online learning is a reflection of the development and the inevitable changes that characterize the modern age. In the last decades, digital technology has been progressively incorporated into the educational system and the teachers benefited from numerous training sessions physics as a practical discipline par excellence can investigate real events in a new and engaging way using digital technology. This presentation illustrates examples of different teaching alternatives using blended learning based on digital resources for the benefit of high school students and physics teachers alike. In addition, we offer some of our own ideas for teaching physics, highlighting the need for digital literacy as a crucial component, uh, component of education. The evolution of technology requires the adaptation of teacher skills. In this new context, being an uh, effective teacher in the world where uh, technology is evolving at an incredible speed, means so that the teacher becomes a mentor, a guide, a facilitator, able to create a good learning environment, uh, able to offer opportunities for inquiry through dynamic learning, <clears throat> to stimulate the student's interest and to improve student learning outcomes and deepen understanding. The educational success is linked with the digital technology and uh, the instructional process must be followed in accordance with the main features of the digital classroom. The use of digital technologies combined with uh, flexible and personalized learning represents the most promising solution in the future. The time of, of e-learning as uh, it was originally defined appears to be over. Experts recommend hybrid forms of learning where mobile, digital, virtual, social, and physical learning spaces merge. Blended learning um, merged the benefits of uh, traditional and uh, online educational approaches. Digital learning includes a variety of specific learning strategies and methods based on the digital technology. Through digital learning, it is hoped that students become more effective. Blended learning could be defined 
as a mixed education combining online and offline seems to be the most desired and widespread form of e-learning in the world at the moment, more effective than traditional or online methods used separately. Of course, that uh, it uh, presents um, a few advantages, like uh, the benefit of many bolder chat tools, interactive software, animations, collaborative platforms, assessment tools, then uh, it encourages the implementation of didactic activities synchronously or asynchronously in different percentages. Blended learning refers to a mix of ways of learning, learning methods, means of transmitting information and online technological resources, synchronous or asynchronous. Open educational resources represent an excellent opportunity for the, moment, for the modern educational process. Um, open educational resources refers to learning, teaching and research materials that are available in any format and medium in the public domain or under open licenses and that allow free access, use, adaptation, and redistribution according to strength. It is important to analyze and adapt open educational resources before being applied. We have to take account of the main evaluation criteria, uh, starting from uh, licensing, re relevance, accuracy, to accessibility, interactivity, and information quality. And uh, the internet uh, bounds in, in uh, many open educational resources. Types of uh, open re educational resources start starting from uh, books, textbooks, courses, worksheets, to quizzes, various materials, audio, video resources, and uh, educational activities and games. Open source e-learning platforms give support for teaching, learning, evaluation of the contents from the curriculum, systematizing deep knowledge outside the classroom in the students' own time and rhythm, training the students' skills. Um, they are used for editing documents and files accessible to user, users, creating hyperlinks for a quick access to useful sites or creating sequences of learning activities. And we can, uh, give, uh, we can give here a lot of examples like um, uh, Canvas, Moodle, Camilo, and so on. The design of a didactic activity in blended learning system requires the adaptation of the documents to blended learning teaching. And in my presentation, I will insist on uh, identifying and creating accessible digital materials involving the students in the creation of digital content. Combined with the face-to-face -face activity, differentiated activities with the educational software provides new possibilities for stimulating cognitive interest, new ways of active and interactive involvement of students in the learning process, and a successful strategy in the teaching learning evaluation process. There are a lot of programs for creating simulations or animations, starting with the uh, map tools, um, GeoGebra, Inkscape, to MATLAB, Open Simulator, so on. The internet abounds in uh, online sites or platforms with um, uh, resources, but we can create our own resources. The animations or simulations integrated into the physics teaching show a better understanding of the concepts. Simulations or virtual experiments compared with the real experiments have the advantage of being used unlimited and repeatedly. 
that students can visualize phenomena that cannot be easily reproduced in the laboratory for various reasons. Teaching and learning physics in a STEM environment that incorporates digital technologies and inquiry-based learning is a current pra practice in our college. Giving students the opportunity to employ digital technology in the investigation, we hope to foster their creativity, multiple intelligence, investigative and practical abilities. Of course, that um, we usually uh, apply scientific investigation method with the, its main stages, evocation, thinking, generating discussion, application, and summarization. I will present you sequences from a web page uh, realized with uh, my students, Elements of Thermodynamics. This uh, web page contains a set of thermodynamics topics, theoretical notions, and virtual experiments, as well as tests, which provide feedback on the assimilated knowledge. The covered uh, <clears throat> topics have sequences organized according to the typical course of a lesson. The learning process is initiated through direct knowledge discovery, starting with a thought-provoking question and visualization of the experiment. Integrating the animations or short videos with the experiments, the students have the opportunity to analyze the unfolding of the phenomena than to define and to formulate conclusions. Um, they are um, encouraged to do um, experiments even uh, at home and to present them to uh, their colleagues. Uh, the lesson can start provoking discussions moderated by teacher. Uh, by, then uh, the experiments um, highlight the phenomena and through the proposed learning activities, the students uh, have the opportunity to observe, to discover, describe, compare, debate, explain, and finally to formulate answers. In this um, experiment, uh, they um, have to notice um, about uh, the diffusion phenomenon. And um, finally, uh, they have to define it, the phenomenon of penetration in all directions of the molecules of one body um, among the molecules of another body or substance without external in, uh, intervention. And they have to notice to, um, uh, what are the factors, factors that influence this uh, uh, phenomenon. Um, simulations um, about diffusion in gases, liquids, and solids um, are made, um, were made with uh, a group of students uh, using their uh, knowledge in informatics. They have to visualize the simulation um, to ask, uh, to answer to us. A, que a certain question, and uh, I included here the expected answer. The same thing uh, for um, diffusion in liquids. They have to visualize the simulation and to describe the effects of communication between these two compartments. The same thing uh, for diffusion in solids. They describe the motion of the particles in uh, which in uh, this case is reduced to small vibrations around the equilibrium positions. And um, for um, describing the Brownian motion, they realized short videos at home with um, pollen particles in water and in oil. They are asked to analyze and compare the movements of the pollen particles in these two situations and to answer um, what are the factors that uh, determine and influence the Brownian motion of the particles. 
for um, a better understanding of the heat transfer by conduction, convection, and radiation, we realized that these uh, simple simulations and they uh, have to describe what happens at the molecular level. The expected answer is included. The same thing uh, for um, convection in a fluid. And uh, for explaining the natural convection of the air, they visualize the simulation and uh, they answer to this question, what is the optimal placement of the radiator in a room? What about the air conditioner? And uh, what would happen if the radiator were placed at the top of the room? For um, a better understanding of the Carnot cycle, we realize this, um, this uh, simulation and uh, the students have to correlate the four strokes cycle and the internally reversible uh, processes. The same thing in the case of auto cycle and uh, diesel cycle and um, the students um, have the opportunity to make a parallel and an analogy between these uh, two engines and the cycles realized uh, by um, uh, in these two cases. Digital tools used, uh, are used to create video resources, some of them, um, I would mention here some visual support for teaching, starting with the uh, virtual whiteboards, interactive whiteboards, PowerPoint presentations, Prezi presentations, Mentimeter, and concept maps. A concept map is a tool that can be well integrated in didactic strategies, which helps to conceptualize, organize, rank, and connect specific content. It allows information to be, to be visualized and organized in logical structures, highlighting the links between them. Concept, complex concept maps can be obtained based on specific programs with links to multiple types of resources being easily distributed and completed. And uh, I would mention here map tools, mind map, Bubble.us, Mindomo, and so on. Um, we can uh, realize the uh, differentiated instruction using a concept map, dividing uh, the class into homogeneous level groups. The high level group uh, uh, gets um, a map, uh, concept map, and the students fill in all the white spaces as well as the missing content connecting words. The middle group um, get a map and um, the map contains the connecting words and the students must fill in the white places. And uh, the low level group has to um, um, complete um, the um, white um, to fill in the empty places in the condition when the map contains the connected words and a few completed places. And I will give you some examples of uh, conceptual maps which I realized with my students. This is a simple one about thermal agi uh, agitation. A more complex one about the law of general transformation. Hello, Gabriela. Yes. Hi. I am so sorry uh, to be disturbing you. Everything is super interesting, but I just wanted uh, to uh, tell you that uh, we are well over time, and since we have two more presentations. Thank you so much. Uh, so you can conclude, of course, but yes, uh, maybe if it's... Um, these are um, the school magazines, um, another option to value and develop the students' uh, digital skills. And uh, as a conclusion, the shift to the new strategy is unavoidable. 
um, mixed education will become the new format adopted both in formal and non-formal environment. I wish you success to all in this uh, new approach. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I saw in the comments that it was very interesting. Uh, there are some questions, but we will save them for the end, okay? So uh, we will now uh, continue to uh, our next presentation and I will invite Sabina into the studio. Hello, Sabina. We, we don't hear you. You need to open your mic. <laughs> yes, sorry. Uh, so hello again to the organizers and also to all participants and welcome to my presentation which I'll share right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it doesn't show us yet. Just a second. Yes, this one. Okay. You can start. Uh, thank you. Uh, so as you can see, I'm a teacher of English at Colegio Nacional Mihai Minescu, a high school based in Bucharest, and I teach uh, upper secondary students. The title of my presentation is Teaching with Two Versatile Online Platforms, Voice of America and the uh, Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Um, my presentation, um, uh, uh, I came to know about these two online platforms uh, thanks to the United uh, States Embassy in Bucharest, which guided me towards taking and completing an online, um, an open online course organized by the U.S. Department of State and the Iowa, Iowa State University in 2021. It was an honor for me to take part in this course, which I strongly recommend for it is well structured, self-paced and free of charge and would like to express my gratitude towards the organizers. Um, the first online platform that I'm going to be talking about today is Voice of America. Uh, in addition to its impactful, well-chosen name, you will be delighted uh, that uh, you will be denied, delighted to know uh, that this online resource has a wide addressability targeting learners of all proficiencies. Uh, as its menu includes the following categories, beginning, intermediate, and advanced levels. I included links and if they can be accessed, um, or maybe I'll share uh, the tab perhaps. So can I stop this presentation and... Uh, also, all the uh, presentations are in the group, so they can also um, click okay. on Yes, uh, then I'll continue without uh, clicking on uh, the links. If, if you want, you can. Um, it's a bit uh, uh, difficult. I'll have to stop sharing this presentation and uh, uh, share a different tab. So um, okay. I believe it was a good uh, idea to keep things simple with only three levels of proficiency of proficiency, a breakdown of too many levels of proficiency, for example, some hierarchies propose levels such as B1 plus can be confusing to students. This is sometimes confusing for learners. The Voice of America menu is completed by a section on uh, US history and the video section, the former uh, being useful for lessons of civilization of the English speaking world. To illustrate the versatility of Voice of America in teaching English, I selected a story entitled The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. Uh, several reasons prompted me to bring uh, this subject matter to your attention. Firstly, uh, whether we like it or not, reading remains the best source of language acquisition. Secondly, there is excellent literature which has been banned from course books. Literature which nevertheless conveys moral values, which uh, course designers have moved second place to information. Thirdly, the story is humorous and will perk up your audience. 
lastly, you can associate it with the celebration of Halloween in an unex unexpected way. So very different from the commonplace marketable version of Halloween that improves sales of spooky costumes, appalling makeup and the paraf paraphernalia. Uh, as presented on uh, Voice of America, the legend of Sle Sleepy Hollow is learner friendly because uh, it provides both textual and audio support, and you can see the link here for this support. Uh, it also provides a lesson plan for teachers with a good lead-in based on visuals and a continuation which is based on prediction. You um, uh, listen to uh, an excerpt, then you uh, pause uh, uh, the track and you ask students to predict what will happen next. Um, it also provides a quiz as a post-listening uh, uh, post activity, uh, a quiz with comprehension questions. And it also provides lexical explanations for unknown words. Um, a good teacher will know how to handle this material based solely on the support offered by uh, Voice of America, or will simply improve it with practice and production exercises in the post-reading stage. The second online platform um, that I would like to approach started as a dictionary, the well-known Merriam-Webster Dictionary, which was developed as a learning platform intended, intended for the learning of grammar and vocabulary of the English language. Dictionaries initiated this enlargement process about two decades ago with the advent of the new technologies by offering additional support on CDs. A presentation entitled From Cave Drawings to Emojis, Communication Comes Full Circle on TEDx Toronto by Marcel Danesi, a semiotician, draws our attention that in 2015, the Oxford English Dictionary chose an emoji as a word uh, of the year. The Oxford Dictionary is a semiotics dictionary, says Danesi. Uh, dictionaries are no longer simple lists of words and their meanings explained. Dictionaries have become complex linguistic tools, allowing learner, learners freedom and creativity in their use. Uh, thus, the online uh, Merriam-Webster Dictionary has been enriched with several new functions instrumental to the teaching or uh, learning process. Um, the a first example would be the function of uh, word games and quizzes. This section proposes several types of exercises. And you can see them, uh, true or false exercises, uh, open answers, uh, multiple choice questions you choose. <laughs> um, uh, now you can see uh, in this slide uh, the word find a function. This section tackles vocabulary practice by playing with letters to get to words. So um, depending on the complexity of words, you can uh, uh, use it with the beginners. Um, this is an example. Uh, it's the third one. Uh, this is an example of uh, playing with words, lexical jocularity. Um, it's based on uh, several lexical fields. Here, another example of lexical jocularity. Um, the grammar section contains uh, clear explanations of common grammatical concepts and can be a useful grammar reference section for intermediate to advanced learners. However, um, there are no, uh, uh, or I haven't seen any practice exercises. So you use it as uh, solely for um, providing students with explanations uh, for, uh, let's say, the verbal system, uh, which is crucial to uh, learning English. <laughs> Finally, uh, finally, um, they also offer an e-shop for books or merch. Um, if you still like to, uh, the feel of the printed book or if you are looking for a useful gift for a friend um, and so on. A small uh, caveat as to the use of the online Merriam-Webster dictionary. Uh, all this teaching material is not uh, compartment, uh, compartmentalized according to levels of proficiency proficiency and consequently a teacher will need more time to read various pages 
in order to select something suitable for the level of his students. Uh, in the end, I would like to thank you for your attention and invite you to complement uh, your teaching and your students' learning with this, uh, these two online platforms, Voice of America and the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Thank you. Thank you very much. And in the comments, they are saying congratulations and thank you for your presentation. Uh, if there will be any question, we will come to them at the end. So thank you for now. Okay, so we are going now to the last presentation. Hello, Karin. Hello. I just Hi. had to wear this little hat with our project logo. Um, so my name is Karen Halmerson. Uh, this is the logo, Watering the Brain, and that's what I'm going to talk about, um, a project about growth mindset. And uh, the fact that I have this sun hat, um, which can be surprising to people knowing that I am from Sweden, but we do have summer, um, don't blink, you will miss it. But um, the fact that our project, we had an Erasmus Plus project uh, with uh, countries from all over the world, basically because we had Reunion Island as one of our uh, partner schools as well. So, and Spain and Slovenia uh, and mm. Romania, which means that this sun hat can come in handy and is something that we have used with students, also t-shirts and so on, that is very valuable. Um, so let's see, should we get started? Yes, okay. Okay, I have right. now a presentation. You yes, can start. Yes, I will go back in. So, um, just to uh, the project name is Mindset Go 2.0. It's 2.0 because we had the project named Mindset Go, where we focused on what we as teachers can do to really motivate students to see that there is nothing called failure or to fail, that fail actually means the first attempt in learning, to focus on the process of learning rather than if you make mistakes. So that was the first project where we focused on that. But we realized that if there is one teacher working with their student in a school, nothing will actually change in the school as a whole. So we continued, so this is actually our um, sixth year of cooperation, and we have uh, worked on how to create a growth mindset school culture. And for this, we actually need everyone. It's not enough with one teacher or two teachers in a school. Um, as you all know, when you want change to happen, you need the headmaster or the principal, you need to also have your colleagues with you and the parents. I think many times we really don't think so much how important it is to have the parents with us. So we are all together focusing on creating and promoting a growth mind school culture. Um, and it has been it started during COVID um and ends now on saturday so what is a growth mindset well we have the logo here created by a spanish student um it actually means that your brain can grow so how can we make it grow and what can happen if you get the impulses and uh uh, inspiration to really see that I can do things. So your first task, because now you've been listening a lot, your first task is to use your mobile phones if you can and have a checking question for you. What does this picture make you think about? And the QR code leads you to our project uh, Padlet that I have created for this occasion. So just take one minute and what does this picture make you think about? One minute from now.
and it's actually a turtle jumping out of the fishbowl. Um, it might not really show that much, but it is in the front of a book that we have used within the project. I think that uh, we will take a very short minute because everybody is tired and we want to finish on time. So what does this picture make you think about in connection with a growth mindset? Well, Carol S. Dweck founded the expressions about fixed mindset, where you believe intelligence is inherited and unchangeable, meaning, oh, but I'm really, really not good at mathematics, but that's okay because my parents were really not good at mathematics, so I guess it runs in the family. So um, I just cross mathematics out of my, I, I cannot do anything. Or growth mindset, where you believe that your skills can improve through exercise and efforts. And I'm sure that you have all heard about something called grit, to have endurance, to try over and over again and see the learning process. Okay, so I haven't learned it yet. So this vocabulary is something that Carol Dweck introduced as well. And she said, not yet, because there is a huge difference in telling somebody, oh, sorry, you failed, you didn't, you didn't do well. But if you say, oh, you didn't get it right yet, there is still hope. So that is what we have been working on. Um, to put it in very brief words, a fixed mindset is, okay, I, I see the limit. Um, I, have, I, I avoid challenges because if I fail, I fail. I will not step out of my comfort zone and try new things because many maybe I will fail and then that's it. I cannot learn new things that way. So I'm either good at it or I'm not. But with a growth mindset, I learn from feedback. I learn that, ah, oh, I didn't manage yet, but what can I do? Okay, I'll learn from my mistakes. I, I see that fail is not failure. It's the first attempt in learning. And I continue from there. So the mind, we say, is like a parachute. It does not work if it isn't open. So if you are open-minded and you continue, then that's the key to success and to progress. So we water our brains, but it's not only how we water them uh, that makes them grow. It's also the vocabulary that we use. And um, staying positive during COVID, actually positive can be so many things. During COVID, it had uh, another meaning, but it's very important that we are positive together with the students. This is just part of the teams. We had several, several conferences online um, to survive uh, during COVID. So what are the project results? The project results are um, guidelines for creating a growth mindset school culture, how to work with staff, how to spread ideas throughout an organization. Um, and the second one is a free online course growth mindset on different levels. We have five modules in the course with a course overview. There is information about a fixed and the growth mindset. Also, there is information about what is a growth mindset language. This not yet that I told you about. So we will in uh, two modules present the superpowers for you as teachers to make your students succeed and also present the student superpowers and how to assess in a positive way, in a feed, not perhaps feedback, but feed forward. So you learn from your mistakes and you go on. 
So instead of saying, sorry, you failed, you will say, ah, oh, you are not there yet. Is there something else you can try? Can you do it in a different way? What are your ideas? And not just praise children and say, oh, you're so intelligent. Instead, go like, oh, I think you really managed to solve this problem in a very, very constructive and good way. Um, we also have a downloadable digital toolkit with ideas for all of you as teachers to download straight ahead. Uh, we are still working on the last translations. So there, as of now, it's in English and French, but it will come into the Padlet uh, that you have the link to um, or the QR code to, uh, in the next days, um, before Saturday anyway. Um, workshops with parents, that's also one very, very important thing. So we um, present um, slide presentations uh, that you can use and uh, best practice examples on how to work with parents. And the last result is compendium for uh, good practice with um, ideas, posters, inspirational um, things for everyone to use freely. So we have a project website, we have uh, the online course, digital toolkit, and everything. And I have tried as much as possible for this event to put it in the Padlet, but we will include more things um, before the project end. And Moltsmask, uh, merci, tak in Swedish, gracias, and hvala, for your time, attention, and active participation. I think I kept 15 minutes. <laughs> hey, you were great, actually. Thank you very much. Uh, I saw there are already some answers on the Padlet. Some of them are, were also in the comment. Maybe I can shortly uh, read them. So uh, okay. it was about the turtle, so that it wants to go outside um, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, its environment, to be brave and to believe in yourself, to do something better. It represents no boundaries and freedom. So these are just a few that were in the comments. Yeah, and as, as just a, a brief thing to that, I think that we as teachers, because now we have been discussing on how to help uh, students uh, in different ways with AI, with digital uh, techniques yeah. and so on. But it's also very important that we support our students uh, verbally with the language we use, with the ways we give them uh, tasks and, and how we present it and how we assess it. So um, then uh, it's it's really, oh, here I see Daniela is, is, is one of our very good partners in Romania. So thank you, Daniela, you've contributed um, to this project in a great way. And also with students who have um, uh, learning difficulties. Yeah. So you can adapt and it's very, very important. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, also, thanks to everyone. They are saying that it was also very, very uh, interesting. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I will now, uh, before uh, we conclude and before I uh, we say goodbye also to our presenters, I have put a link to evaluate today's conference and presentations in the comments. We will be very happy to hear your feedback. Uh, thank you for all the comments and of course for all the questions. We will also be expecting you the next month, the last Thursday of the month to um, tune in again. And of course, if you want to uh, present, you can always apply on our web page. You can follow us on Facebook or uh, on Instagram page. So I invite once again all or the presenters that are still with us uh, in the studio. So uh, if you want to add anything uh, now, otherwise I will uh, thank you very much for everything. Thank you, Sabina, Palma, Karin, also Diana, who had to go uh, to work. And, uh, of course, also to uh, Gabriela, who's here with us.
Okay, do you want to say or add anything else? Otherwise, we will shortly conclude. Shortly conclude. Okay, <laughs> I see there are no further comments. So, uh, thank you very much. I will see you, uh, of course, next month. Bye. Goodbye. See you.